Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Bytes. Obi Wan here. Today's video is going to be on a kind of widely requested clarification around Truebit. Context of stuff, you know, what it's doing, what problems it's solving, how it compares to competitors, uh, some price predictions, and why we think it's going to get to where we think it's going to get to. So here we go. So Truebit is a scalable verification solutions solution for blockchains. And so it increases the computational output of a blockchain that's on by maybe hundreds, thousands of times. It's by orders of magnitude. So it's quite a big deal. It was in development by Jason Touch, one of the core members of the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a big deal. It's, 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 quite, it's quite a game changer. It's hailed as kind of the god of proofs for this kind of this this, this kind of sector of uh, com computing so it solves the issue of scalability so right now ethereum if you've used uniswap the ethereum fees are 200 dollars for a transaction so if you think about you know selling 20 dollars worth of tokens you're paying 200 dollars to do that here thereabouts and if you're sending tokens around to different wallets on the ethereum blockchain you're waiting 10 15 minutes for the transaction to happen because it has to be confirmed 12 times and the kind of network is so 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 kind of congested right now that yeah it does take 10 to 15 minutes so to put it differently imagine if you are paying for a cup of coffee with ethereum and you are buying a 10 dollar cup of coffee and you had to pay 200 dollars right and then you had to stand by the payment machine for 15 minutes as the transaction is confirmed yeah that's that's kind of what we're talking about in terms of the level of scalability we want for ethereum you know for mainstream adoption so that's an issue and there are a couple of kind of approaches to this so there's layer one solutions the on-chain um so that's basically sharding where blockchains have to kind of confirm confirm a a transaction across the entire blockchain and, and then codify it in a block but uh, a mechanism or technique that's been used from parallel computing and data warehousing is sharding where you split the blockchain up into different sections and each section is its own validator and so instead of confirming it across the entire blockchain you're confirming it across a smaller section of that blockchain which obviously saves on computational power and time slash latency so the trans Transactions per second of Ethereum blockchain is around 30, 30 transactions per second and Ethereum 2.0 after the sharding upgrade will be providing about 100,000 transactions per second. So that is quite a big improvement, but it's not the holy grail guys. Ethereum 2.0 will still need work and layer two solutions will still be relevant. They will still serve to kind of optimize and support um, Ethereum synergistically. And so there, you know, there's a common question of will Truebit be relevant when Ethereum 2.0 comes out? Um, no, it won't be. It will still be heavily in use, as will you know, competitors like Matic, uh, Layer Two Solutions, which is also kind of very advanced in what it's offering. So Layer Two Solutions are off chain, so they take the data off chain, solve it, and then put it back on. So State Channel is an example of that. Uh, Another example is like the Ethereum Lightning Lightning upgrade, Lightning Network. So essentially you just take the data off, batch it and solve everything and then send it back on. And so you only kind of get the start and the end. So that is basically state channel, right? Imagine playing a game of tic-tac-toe and you and someone play that game. And so you put that into the blockchain and then you play that, then you play that game, you do all your moves, someone wins and then you send the finished game into the blockchain so you've just got two 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 kind of inputs and then we have side chains or plas plasma architecture which is basically a really sophisticated kind of nest of blockchains that is quite complex you can have like um different consensus mechanisms and, and block times on, on each blockchain uh but they, they basically kind of um um scale from with that approach uh, and then you have Truebit, which is not really a side chain or plasma architecture, and it's not really a state channel. It kind of takes a, you know another another approach, but it's complementary to side chain or plasma architecture. So it can be used alongside Matic um, and other approaches. So that's that's one question I get asked: Is is Truebit like a competitor to Matic? Well, in my first video, I say it's a competitor in a general sense because they're both layer two solutions but in actuality they take different approaches and they can be leveraged on top of each other so you can use Truebit with Matic Network 
okay so that's kind of the the, the, the approach so scalability is the issue we want to have mainstream scalability to allow us to use ethereum in day-to-day -day life and um for kind of computationally heavy projects like uh, geodb and ocean protocol um, and we want those transactions and computing costs to be cheap and fast. And so we have layer one solutions, which are going to be sharding for Ethereum 2.0. And then we have layer two solutions, which are off-chain solutions like state channels and side chains. And then we've got the TrueBit approach. Okay, so the tokenomics of TrueBit are the next thing we're going to clarify. So TrueBit, uh, to use the TrueBit system, you have to have TrueBit tokens. And when you use the system, you're burning those tokens, right? And so... There's also a minting function. So when TrueBit gets past a certain price, any more buy pressure means that it's minting tokens according to a bonding curve. So any kind of expansion beyond a certain price point is minting more tokens, increasing supply. So it's kind of think of it like inflation. Um, and then you also have the burn mechanisms I've just mentioned. So people who are using the token are burning it as they're using it. The team get paid during the minting function, right? Because there's an opportunity for arbitrage there where if it's if it's uh below the if 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 the price on the market is above the minting price then the bots can buy it from the operating system and sell it on the market for a higher price and so that's how the tokens that's how the TrueBit team get paid so they don't have any kind of percentage of the TrueBit tokens set aside for the team they will get paid through the minting function okay so the bonding curve, how it works is this diagram. So the think of the y-axis as the price and the x-axis as the supply. And so as the price is increasing or the market cap is increasing, the supply is increasing, when it gets to a certain price point, in this case, that's when it starts having this relationship. But before that price point is basically linear. Um, after that price point, you're creating more and more tokens. And so the price uh, is, is, is not changing proportionally. So for example, if you bought TrueBit at 0.4, when I kind of made my video, my first video on it, then you you would have noticed that the market cap was around 40 million. And then when TrueBit got to 200 million market cap, it was only about a dollar. So the market cap increased by 5x, but the price of the tokens increased by 2.5x, which is not, proportion, not proportional. And that is because of the bonding curve. So the arbitrage opportunity. So you can get TrueBit tokens from the operating system directly or you can buy it on the market um, whichever one is cheaper is the one people will go for so the market will push it towards equilibrium so if if the market price is lower than the operating system price then people will just buy it directly from the market um, and the projects will just you know purchase it from the market and if the market price is a lot higher or sorry if the market price is yeah if the market price is a lot higher than it is in the operating system then they'll just buy it from the operating system and then there's an upcharge opportunity because the the operating system the bots in the operating system will will just sell the true bit at a higher price on the market and they'll make some profit by that and that's how the team will get paid if the market price is lower then projects will just buy straight from the market and that will push the price up until it reaches that minting price or that state of equi equilibrium okay so the key point with um, TrueBit is that minting price. So, so we, someone created this nice little little kind of UI that calculates the minting price. I want you guys to notice that the minting price is based on Ethereum. And so that raises a key point that the price of TrueBit is very, very tightly linked to the performance of Ethereum. Yeah, so it will never be more than 0 0.000422. It's always this ETH. But because ETH is increasing in price, then that means that the dollar price will be changing based on how ETH is performing. So if ETH drops in price, then this price drops. Yeah, so TrueBit is very linked to, very closely linked to the performance of Ethereum. Um, but yeah, so that's 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 how it works. So at the moment, the OS mint price is $1.69. So until the TrueBit price hits $1.69, the supply won't be increasing. When it goes beyond that, then it will start minting um, at a, a rate defined by the bonding curve. Right, so key reasons I think TrueBit is going to pump are the projects that it's going to be used on, so it's utility. So remember the burn function? When when you use the TrueBit platform, you burn the tokens, all right? So projects that have mentioned TrueBit in their white papers 
um, and their tech kind of extensively are Ethereum, Chainlink, Tron, Matic, Nervos, Zippy, Ocean Protocol has very, very, very strong ties with Trubit, um, Jason Touche, her founder. And so, guys, we have every reason to believe that Trubit will be implemented um, post haste in some of these top, top projects. And that would mean that the price will, f will fly, absolutely fly. Um, and so that's 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 a pretty big deal, guys. When 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 it starts being used on you know projects like Chainlink and Tron, which manage millions of dollars in volume every day, then what do you think that's going to do to the price? It's going to increase the price, right? Because it will be burning so much. It will be burning a ton of Trubit tokens, based on you know being utilized to solve the computational costs, you know associate with data projects or oracle projects like chainlink or with ecosystems like the tron ecosystem or with matic so trubit can be used alongside matic um, matic doesn't exactly do what trubit does so that's why they're not direct competitors so that is the reason and also if eth is increasing in price and i know they're gonna make eth deflationary so they're gonna make eth uh, you know they, they, they start burning so when you send eth then they burn a, p a percentage of that ethereum so the supply of eth will be slowly decreasing and its utility is going to be increasing right because the ecosystem is growing and eth 2.0 is going to make it more scalable so we can see eth hitting maybe 50 to 100k um in in the future um when that's the case then that means that the os mint price is going to be increasing so if we see that mint price reaching you know hundred dollars a thousand dollars xyz that means that until ethereum hits that price until the trubit token hits that price there won't be um increasing the supply which would mean that it's yeah it's it's gonna pump like people will, will, will buy it projects will buy it to use the platform and that that says good things for the project so there, there was kind of a perfect storm forming for trubit basically right and so um key questions Will Trubit be relevant when ETH 2.0 comes out? No, Trubit will still be highly relevant and it's also blockchain agnostic. So it will be used in other blockchains like Tron and etc. So Trubit is still, you know, going to be very, very useful and it will still be useful in Ethereum 2.0 because it's Ethereum 2.0 is much more scalable than ETH, but it will still need support. Um, so the relationship between, you know, layer two solutions, scalability solutions, and Ethereum 2.0 will still be synergistic. Synergistic, So Matic and, 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 Pro and Trubit and protocols like that will still be leveraged on top of Ethereum 2.0 to enhance the blockchain. So no, it won't be. It will still be relevant. Is Trubit a competitor to Matic? No, they use slightly different layer two um, um, and tech. And so they're not direct competitors. Uh, you can use Trubit with Matic. Um, they can complement each other and can Trubit hit $100. I think Trubit can hit $100 plus easily, especially when we start using Trubit on really data intensive projects like big data projects like uh, Ocean Protocol, Boson Protocol. I think we can see Trubit hit kind of crazy numbers. Uh, and finally, let us look at the charts. So if we look at the charts for Trubit, we'll see it is around $0.8 which is good or last last time I checked it was around 0 0.8 dollars so the price is crawling is crawling um, and to be honest I don't really check it often so it's just one of those things where I'm, I'm not I'm not too fast like I, I don't believe in like constantly checking long-term investments i just don't know why you do that to yourself um but yeah so the price is crawling but yeah i, I haven't been watching it and if you bought it during my first video we, you got in you got in below this 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 bottom anyway so we're fine but um yeah when it starts being utilized properly that's what we're gonna see yeah it's, it's, it's gonna be yeah what's coming up is going to be amazing so huddle huddle your bags huddle your bags it's going to be a good year if you got into trubit this is a long-term investment i'm not watching the charts i really don't care um you know i i think i think this will really get to that hundred dollar kind of ten dollar hundred dollar seventy dollar kind of mark with ease and so it's just not really it's not really a problem for me i'm not, I'm not really too fast so just sit back and enjoy 
um, enjoy the ride and, you know, focus on, I would say, focus on other of your short term trades, you know, manage your portfolio, stop kind of second guessing yourself on solid long term investments and focus on kind of getting, you know, your, your, your shorter term trades correct. Um, I've been doing this for a while and one of the worst thing you can do is keep on checking long term projects because maybe something happens, a market downturn like this dip and then you sell in the dip and cost yourself, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the future because of a short term scare. Right. And then you think, oh, you know, I bought the wrong time. It's going to be the end. And actually, it's not. It's not a big deal. So we bought we bought in early anyway. And just like, yeah, whatever you can do. Go down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And test results. It's, I see all these people doing TA, you know, drawing all these wedges. And it's like, oh, you know, it's going to do well here, here, here. And it's just like, eh. It's just like, you know, it's, uh, we know where this is going long term, so I, I just don't see the point. And I think it's more to do with how quickly these, these companies can integrate the tech. So Trubit is a working product, so um, it's been in development for a while. It's not like they've come onto the market with all this hype and said, we can do this. They're saying, we have done this, like this is what we do. The product is ready. And, you know, everything they're saying is already done as a working product is just pro it's already generating profit so it's just for these guys to kind of integrate it and so if we look if we kind of assume it's on the timeline of um other projects like uh um other projects like uh you know the time it takes to integrate something a project on matic like axia is doing then i'll say we give it a couple months um so it's already been out for since april so yeah i think in the next month or so i think we should see some big price action but just hold on to this one guys and thank me later okay but um that's it for tubit so we've talked about the bonding curve and this is a great example of the bonding curve the market cap spiked 5x and the price didn't really kind of reflect that as much and that's okay um and then when we're going to have that adoption we have that burn rate which is going to completely spike this price and then we're also going to have ethereum also you know 5xing from here which will also further spike the price um, of Trubit. And so it's a perfect storm, guys. All right, that's it for this video. Stay safe out there. Peace.